Romans chapter 5, and I'm going to read starting in verse 6. Romans chapter 5, um, we're talking about the death of Jesus Christ, and uh, I want to talk about death in, in general as well, but particularly about uh, the gospel this morning, about Jesus Christ. So Romans chapter 5, starting in verse 6, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. We just stop reading there. I preached most of my best sermons in my office, and I found this one very emotional, and I don't apologize for that. I don't know... Uh, how this will go this morning, but you know, talking about death is, is a difficult thing. Uh, we've all probably reached a point where we've experienced a death in our family, in our friends, and, and so on. And the Bible tells us that death came into our world by one man. Verse 12 here, he says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. sinned. Uh, we, we know that death is just a, a part of our existence. And the Bible says it came as a result of sin. And it was passed to everyone. You know, if we have a, a sickness that's going around, passing it from one to another, oh, we're careful. We try to you know, we cover our mouths. We, we know a church where instead of shaking hands during the cold season, they... They go, how you doing, you know, kind of thing. Uh, but sin is, it, there's no cure other than what Jesus has done. And it was his death. Nothing else that could remedy the problem that we face. The Bible says we're reconciled to God by the death of his son. It was sin and death that, that separated us from God. It was by sin. And God's remedy, His reconciliation, was the payment of the life of Jesus Christ. You know, the Old Testament told of, of God's remedy. Even Genesis chapter 3 uh, indicates you know, that, that, that the remedy was going to be in, in the Redeemer, in Jesus Christ. Uh, Isaiah 53 is a portion of Scripture that many of you are familiar with. Um, in verse 12, he says, He hath poured out his soul unto death. Now, I realize as I looked at many of the prophecies of the Messiah, it doesn't talk a lot about death, but it, it's there. That he would be the, the remedy for sin. In Isaiah 53 as well, he says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem of stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. At least 15 times that I counted in the book of Matthew, it uses a phrase like, this was done that it might be fulfilled. And Jesus was just fulfilling all of those prophecies. Uh, many details. Sometimes you think, uh, why is that important? Well, it's important because God said it was going to happen. And Jesus uh, came and fulfilled prophecy. Uh, he spoke of his own death in, in Matthew uh, chapter 16, verse 21. 
It's interesting as you, as you read the, the Gospels, how often the disciples wouldn't understand such plain statements that Jesus would make. Here's, here's one in Matthew 16, 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto His disciples how that He must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. If you read on there, you see this is where Peter rebukes him for that. <laughs> Jesus was just telling them, this is, this is what's going to happen. In Matthew 20, verse 18, it's his own words when he says, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death. In uh, chapter 26, verse 31, uh, he actually quotes Zechariah. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. He understood why he was there and what he was going to do. And I think there's no verse that portrays it quite so graphically as chapter 26, verse 38. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Jesus understood exactly what was happening. He understood it fully. And when the Bible says there that he says his soul is, is exceeding sorrowful even unto death, it's not just talking about he's sorrowful because he's going to die. He's saying the sorrow of, of that situation was so... <laughs> That it was, it was just killing him. It was just uh, such a grief and sorrow that it was, it was physically hard on him. He understood what was, what was happening. He, he later calls it this cup. Uh, in verse 39, the middle part, Oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. And that included his death, but it also included bearing all the sins of the world. We're used to sin. <laughs> We're born in sin. Uh, but for Jesus, this was something, uh, something he'd, he'd never experienced. In 2 Corinthians 5.21 it says, He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. In Him. Not only bearing our sin, not only dying, but uh, later on, uh, He says in Matthew 27, verse 46, My God, my God, why hast Thou forsaken Me? Uh, being somehow separated as God the Son and, and God the Father. Jesus spoke of His own death and He understood exactly what was involved and why He was there. And you know, the problem of death is not just death itself. In 1 Corinthians 15.56, he tells us that the, the problem of death is sin. 1 Corinthians 15.56 says, The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Isn't it interesting that the world takes both of those ideas and uses them as their means of boasting. The sting of death is sin. Yeah, there's people who boast about their sin. And yet God says, that's the very sting of death. There's others who boast about keeping the law. And yet, the Bible says, uh, the strength of sin is the law. You know, sin is, is the problem with death because we're going to experience God's wrath. We read in Romans 5, much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Without forgiveness, without uh, salvation, death means that a person will face the judgment and, and wrath of God. Now, the Bible tells us we'll be, uh, we'll be a person without Christ dying in their sins will be separated from life. Uh, in Romans 5, he, he called us enemies when we were enemies. You know, the Bible says we've all sinned. This is not a condition that's just for a few. 
And it says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. You know, the law will never justify us. God says that in Romans chapter 3, verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. You see, like he, like he says in, in Corinthians, the law is, is the strength. It's what says, yes, for sure. The law will only condemn us. And he, he asks in Romans 7.24, who will deliver us? Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And the answer is in the next verse, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. As we read there in Romans 5.10, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. In uh, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9, let's see here, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9, The Bible says, but we see Jesus, who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Christ died for every one of us. He tasted death. And in verse 10, it calls him the captain of our salvation. What a, what a blessed title. The captain of our salvation. He went first. He took our place. He, he's the one who, who, who took responsibility for us. And the Bible says in, in Romans 5.10 that by His death, we can be reconciled to God. Sin had separated us. And because of sin came death. Separated from God, separated from life. And yet, God took that very thing and made it the means of our salvation. God has a way of doing that. God has a a way of making good come out of things you'd never expect. Death is is hard. The Bible does still call it our enemy. But you know, there are some blessings in death. God uses it for good when He provides our salvation. You know, He talks about the the sting of of death as sin. Well, God pulls death's stinger. You know, for the Christian, uh, death has changed. I've been to funerals where there, really there's, there's rejoicing. I don't know about if you have. I've been to some pretty sad funerals. But I've been to some funerals where you just, you know, you just, you hate to say it, but you enjoy it. <laughs> the Bible says in Psalm 116, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Uh, my father passed away a few years ago and I wasn't able to be there. They didn't actually have a funeral, but they, they waited, uh, Till I was there, and, and we had a memorial service, and, and I, I've got to say I enjoyed it. It was a blessing to to think about you know how God had saved his soul and how God had used him, and what a blessing he he'd been. Uh, God provided salvation, reconciliation. We were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. You know, in, in another sense, not not only are we saved and, and can go to heaven because of Christ's death. But in a very real way, death sets the Christian free from sin's curse. Uh, I remember watching my dad age. When he was young, he was a strong man. I can, he was a teacher, Christian school teacher and principal. And I can remember the, the teenagers racing him. Mr. Bramlick, will you race us? And he'd always beat him. He was fast. He was strong. That's a long time ago. As he got older, he was about my height in, in his prime. And, uh, but as he got older, he got shorter and shorter and shorter. <laughs> he, he just got so bent over. Uh, when my mother died, he went and lived with, uh, with my sister. Is there any tissues around here? Anyway, um, and uh, she said she had a hole in her wall. She said it's a nice little round hole where he fell and hit his head. And she said she really likes that little hole. <laughs> she really appreciates it. Okay. Let's see. 
Thank you for that. Sorry, um, part of life. Um, but you know, getting old is, is not, what do they say, it's not for cowards. And it's not just getting old. Uh, a child can suffer uh, in, in this, this life. But we know as, as Christians, when, when death comes for a Christian, it's, it's the door to heaven. And, you know, to, to think of my, my father now, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think of the trouble. I think of the blessing. He, he sets us free from, from sin's curse, even in the midst of, of trouble. In, in Romans 14, he says, whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Yeah, what a blessing it is to know that even this thing that's, that's so hard and, and so difficult for the Christian can have, can have a blessing. We can get uh, ultimate sanctification, I guess you'd, you'd call it, you know, with the Lord and, and like the Lord. And what Satan meant for evil, God used for good. He uses it for good as Christians as we go home to be with Him. But particularly, He used it for good and that we're reconciled to God by the death of His Son. And you know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Someday it's going to be destroyed. Someday it won't, it won't be there anymore. But you know, it's still an enemy now. When people die without Christ, they really do go to hell. And... Uh, that's an enemy. You know, people being pulled into eternity uh, without Christ. And the Bible says that Jesus took that, that bitter cup of death. The very first part of the gospel is Christ died for our sins. And without that, the rest of it would mean nothing. Christ died for our sins. He lived, Matthew 26, verse 38. My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. He was willing to, to take that cup of death, to take that cup of our sins, to take that cup of separation from the Father in order that we might be reconciled to God. He lived that verse. He lived Matthew twenty six thirty eight so that we could live Romans 5.10. When we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And my question to you this morning would be, are you reconciled to God? Have you trusted God's remedy for sin? The law won't save you. Sin will condemn you. But Christ is the Savior, reconciled to God by the death of His Son. I'm going to close there in, in, in prayer. Father, thank You so much for that bitter cup that you were, you were willing to take. Lord, thank You for dying for our sins. Father, help us to understand the enormous meaning of that. Lord, not for my sins only, but for the sins of the whole world, for every man. Help us, Lord, to, to honor you and love you because of it. Lord, help us to believe. I pray if there are those here this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would draw them to you in, in loving kindness. Lord, that they would know the reconciliation that only uh, your death, burial, and resurrection can provide. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.